Hi, my name is Tim Kane, and I'm the Lieutenant Governor of Virginia. One of my responsibilities is to serve as the Chairman of the State's Disability Commission. On the Commission, we promote policies and programs to create the most opportunities possible for Virginians with disabilities. I'm here today to introduce a program, a wonderful program called Visor Alert, that is jointly sponsored by the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police, the Virginia Department for Deaf and Hard of Hearing, and the Department of Motor Vehicles. This is a program, and a simple one, that helps police officers communicate more effectively with Virginians who have hearing disabilities and also those citizens cooperate more effectively with law enforcement. That communication is key to effective law enforcement and I hope you'll learn about this program and implement it in the communities across Virginia. All the activities a law enforcement officer conducts, none has a greater potential for danger than a traffic stop. For this reason, officers are trained to follow specific procedures to ensure their own safety and that of the motorist. Jack White of Pocosin is president of the Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police. An officer has to protect himself, and when he makes a traffic stop, there are certain procedures that he will follow, regardless of who he stops. And these procedures are designed to ensure that it remains a safe stop and that he doesn't get injured. And everyone, all citizens, need to know that the officers are going to be concerned about safety first, their safety and the citizen's safety. But when the motorist is deaf or hard of hearing, he or she may behave in a way that may cause concern for the police officer. By failing to respond to a siren, or by reaching for pen and paper to communicate as the officer approaches, creating an atmosphere of anxiety and confusion for both the officer and the motorist. Vince Burgess is Assistant Commissioner of the Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles. Normally when an officer approaches a vehicle and asks the individual to perform certain tasks, uh, that individual, one, turns towards the officer uh, acknowledges and does those tasks. I think with someone that's hard of hearing, deaf or hard of hearing, you don't, you don't have that scenario. And then the officer immediately starts going through his or her mind, you know, what is going on with this individual? Ron Lanier is director of the Virginia Department for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. There is a tendency to reach for something in the car, for example when they're pulled over to reach for a pen and paper or something of that type. And this, the, the, this, this puts the officer on alert and they need to be aware of this aspect of, um, of, of deaf and hard of hearing individuals, a tendency to you know, provide for their own communication knowing that they're deaf and hard of hearing. The first thing usually they think of is maybe grabbing pen and paper to communicate with the police officer. Visor Alert lets the officer know right away that the motorist is deaf or hard of hearing. The Visor Alert card should be attached to the vehicle sun visor. When the vehicle is stopped, the motorist points to the Visor Alert and to his or her ear, and then hands the Visor Alert card to the police officer. This allows the deaf or hard of hearing motorist to explain their communication needs to the officer in a safe and effective way. Through a series of checkboxes, the card also lets the officer know how best to communicate with the driver through pen and paper, lip reading, sign language, or other methods. You talk a little bit slower? Yes, ma'am. I'll stop you because you ran... The Visor Alert also offers these tips on making communication clearer. Try to eliminate background noise. Do not cover your mouth with hand or paper. Don't shout. Just use a normal tone. Speak slowly and clearly. Face the person when you speak. Be sure there's a light so the motorist can see you. And provide an interpreter or transliterator if the person uses sign language or cued speech. This visor card allows them to provide immediate um, an alert to the police officer so that that police officer would know um, there's a different method of communication that needs to take place.
the individual, the deaf or hard of hearing person, simply would gesture to that card to alert the police officer instead of searching around in the car for something which can be alarming for a police officer. He will have to make judgments uh, based on the situation at hand, the time of day, the time of night, the location, people in the car, all these sorts of things will have bearing on how he reacts to what he has in front of him. Uh, even with the card and the fact that he knows these people may be hard of hearing, uh, he still has to, he is still responsible to provide for his own safety and to act accordingly. Once the police officer is satisfied that the situation is safe, he or she may, at the officer's discretion, move forward so that the motorist can see the officer face to face in order to lip read more easily. Or the officer may write notes to ask for the driver's license and vehicle registration. Well, the card is the key. It reduces, I think, the tension then between the individual being stopped and the officer where the individual uh, is frustrated probably because they realize they can't communicate effectively with the officer but then providing this card and the information within it uh, it levels the playing field so to speak it gives then the 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 officer and the individual operator of the vehicle the same in understanding that the communication has to occur in different ways it reduces, uh, you're always having to be concerned, obviously, for the officer's safety. And anything that reduces that concern, uh, I think, is very important in a situation like this. Because the officer didn't stop you to tell you to have a nice day. Obviously, you did something that brought to his attention or her attention uh, an infraction of the law. And so, you know, there is an adversarial potential adversarial situation that could escalate if something like this card that, that has been produced uh, in this program is not used. The deaf or hard of hearing person can also use a wallet card to provide even more information about communication needs, including how to reach the person by telephone and emergency contacts. This wallet card can help officers establish good communications when interviewing a person who is deaf or hard of hearing. A witness, and I would like to talk to somebody about looking at some pictures. In this interview, the hard of hearing individual is using an assistive listening device, or ALD. Right? Are you familiar with this? Recognize that. Oh, good. This device filters out ambient or background noise and enhances the voice of the person using the microphone. I'll put this on here. That makes it a lot easier. Yes, it does. Yes. The device makes it easier for the person to hear, but it is still important to take your time, speak clearly, and face the person you're talking to. What method will work best in an interview will depend on the communications needs of the deaf or hard of hearing individual. These needs are clearly indicated on the wallet card. In this interview, the wallet card has indicated that a sign language interpreter is needed. At the front desk, writing notes provides initial communication. In the actual interview, the interpreter sits next to the police officer so that the deaf or hard of hearing person can see the interpreter clearly. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's him. On a scale from one to 10, how sure are you that it's him? Again, the officer needs to make sure to speak slowly and clearly. About a nine. About a nine, that's pretty sure. <laughs> That's pretty sure. Visor alerts and wallet cards are being distributed statewide to deaf and hard of hearing persons. As director of a, a state agency that services deaf and hard of hearing in the, in, within the state of Virginia, uh, we're very excited about uh, this opportunity to provide, uh, to assist in the provision of uh, the visor alert cards as well as the wallet cards. Um, we're also excited about the the joint efforts between various agencies to make this happen um, because it is through this effort that we, we're bridging the communication between the deaf and hard of hearing and other state agencies and other individuals. Uh, for example, the wallet card can be used just going into a doctor's office to facilitate communication. Uh, the, the visor card, of course, would be used on the highway if, if, if one is pulled over by a police officer. Everyone who is a driver in Virginia 
deserves to be uh, provided with the tools, the uh, educational experience that we can offer uh, to make sure that they're a safe and responsible driver on the, on the highways of the Commonwealth. Uh, I see this as an opportunity for us to provide to one part of our population, the drivers who are deaf and hard of hearing, with a tool that can aid them in situations that they might find themselves in, where the ability not to be able to communicate would compromise the situation. I was amazed that there wasn't a standardized process in Virginia to, to do this. And there appeared to be uh, little pockets of different programs. And what, what I'm very excited about is that it does standardize this process so that we are all singing from the same sheet of music, if you will. Uh, and in the law enforcement community, that's very, very important. One of the most important missions of the Virginia Chiefs Association is training. And we hope that this sensitivity and awareness training that we are providing will give some sort of insight to not only our officers, but also to the members of the deaf and hard of hearing community so that the two can better understand each other and appreciate what each other has to do at the scene of a traffic stop or some official encounter.